Hello everyone, let's go over some basic anatomical relations of the basal ganglia and related structures. Uh, so I'm using this uh, plastic brain model. Uh, it's not super accurate, but uh, it's helpful that it can be taken apart and it shows you the three-dimensional relations between different structures. So what you're looking at here is the brain from a superior view. You have anterior, posterior, um, and lateral. And I'm going to take apart the uh, upper half of the two hemispheres. Uh, here you can uh, appreciate that this is the um, corpus callosum already taken out. And what you're looking at here is the basal ganglia and surrounding structures from above. Before I take those uh, uh, parts out, I need to uh, just focus on something in the midline that will be lost if I take it out. Uh, this here is the fornix and uh, this these two structures are the lateral ventricles. So uh, between the lateral ventricles, as you may know, there's a septum that should be here, but it's not. It's called the septum pellucidum. It may have a cavity in the middle, uh, but this has been taken out at the inferior edge of that uh, septum pellucidum. There should be the fornix. The fornix um, are these fibers that connect uh, the basal forebrain nuclei that are here. Uh, in the basal forebrain, uh, also the hypothalamus, the thalamus, the nucleus accumbens, and the mammillary body um, are all connected all the way back down to the uh, structure in the temporal lobe that we will see once I take it apart uh, that, that we call the hippocampus. So it's a huge uh, uh, tract that connects uh, the nuclei here with the hippocampus on both sides and it, it divides into two. I'll show it to you when, I, when we take uh, those pieces apart. Uh, but before I take them apart, I want to go from medial to lateral. You have uh, the fornix. There should be the septum pellucidum here and then the fornix at, at the lower edge. You have the lateral ventricles. And then you have the internal capsule. You don't see the uh, cottage um, um, nucleus uh, yet on this side. You can see a shadow of it on this side here. And I have to go over each side because those two are, were, were cut differently or de demonstrating different things. Uh, so you have the uh, internal capsule on both sides here. And then you have this cortex, which basically if you uh, this is the temporal lobe, so if we take that lateral fissure out or spread it apart, this is the cortex that we'll be looking at, which is basically the insula. Okay, so let me take uh, those pieces off and show you what the structures on the midline would look like. Okay, so let me first show you this. This here is the fornix that I showed you, and it, it div divides here at the lyra area. And um, these basically are commissural fibers that will be connected this, connecting this half with this half. Um, and the fornix will take you all the way to uh, the hippocampus on both sides here. And it, this side, this end, would be connecting to this area basically around the anterior commissure will be divided in two uh, um, divisions. One would go to the basal uh, aspect of the frontal lobe. Right here there are some nuclei, especially the septal nucleus, and uh, also will be connecting to uh, the nucleus accumbens, which we will see uh, when we look at the, um, um, uh, the basal ganglia in details, and um, will also connect to the hypothalamus and the thalamus. Okay, so this here is the two uh, temporal lobe, the hippocampi, and the fornix in the midline that should have run right here. Okay, and the uh, cerebellum should be here. I'll take it out and let's go and look at these um, basal ganglia in detail. So let me take out the rest of the uh, frontal lobe also and look at these on both sides. So let's let's start with this side here. Uh, this is the insula as we mentioned and let me take out the insula that will take us to this view here, which is basically the um, lentiform nucleus, okay? And it's almost hugged or surrounded like this by this structure that goes up and down, those 
white matter fibers that go up and down uh, between the uh, brain stem and the um, cerebral cortex that we call the internal capsule. So the lentiform nucleus is lateral to the uh, internal capsule. Lentiform, L, lateral. Okay, so lentiform nucleus is always lateral regardless of what cut you're looking at, whether it's a coronal cut or sagittal cut, it's always lateral to uh, the internal capsule. That's how you recognize it. So if we take this lentiform nucleus that looks like a lens, that's why it was called the lentiform nucleus, um, you will find that it was colored actually differently. So uh, it's giving you a clue that it's actually two structures. It's two nuclei, not one. The lentiform nucleus has the uh, putamen, which is anterolateral, and it has this cone-shaped structure or nucleus that we call the, um, the globus pallidus. I want you to remember that the globus pallidus itself is two segments. You have the external segment and you have the internal segment, which you don't see the difference here. But the external would be on this side, the internal would be on this side. The tip of that cone, and some people call it an ice cream cone, okay, the tip of it uh, is the internal segment of the globus pallidus. And this is extremely important because the, uh, this segment, the internal segment, is um, one of the two main exit points for signals um, exiting uh, the uh, basal ganglia to the thalamus. Okay? So you have the lentiform nucleus lateral to the internal capsule, like this. Let, let me take it apart. And let me take the next structure apart, which is uh, the internal capsule. Here in the, on this side, they attach the internal capsule to the caudate nucleus, but this basically should be a different structure. And we'll see it on the opposite side, they did it differently. Um, this here is the caudate nucleus. Okay, and it's, it should be connected to the lentiform nucleus, specifically, not the entire lentiform nucleus, but to the putamen. Okay, so the putamen should have bridges of fibers that connects it with the caudate nucleus together. Uh, they're called the dorsal striatum or just short uh, the striatum, which is the um, entry point for signals coming to the uh, um, basal ganglia. Okay, so you have lentiform nucleus, which has the putamen, the, the globus pallidus, external and internal segments. You have the internal capsule. Once you take the internal capsule out, you have the caudate nucleus, and it's forming a C-shaped structure. Remember, it w it's just like the, the fornix is also C-shaped. C -shaped. So uh, the other C-shaped structure on, um, on both sides is the, uh, the caudate nucleus and it used to be like this. So the caudate nucleus is actually indenting the lateral uh, wall of the lat lateral ventricle. Okay, so if I take it out like this, you'll see the imprint of the caudate nucleus on the lateral ventricle like you see here. What remains, the structure that remains here, which is not part of the basal ganglia, uh, but part of the diencephalon, it's the, uh, the thalamus. This here is the thalamus, and uh, anterior and inferior and medial to it is the hypothalamus. So you have thalamus and hypothalamus, and uh, together, remember that it, together with the um, brainstem, it looks like a seahorse, like this is the head, and this is the snout uh, of the seahorse. The head is going to be uh, the uh, thalamus, and the snout would be the hypothalamus, and the two hypothalami will connect to the pituitary gland, which used to be here, but it's not in, on this model. Um, it's connecting to it through the infundibulum. Um, below the uh, thalamus, you have the um, midbrain. Below the midbrain, you have the pons, and then the medulla which we talked about in a separate uh, video. Um, I want to emphasize that the two uh, lateral ventricles are separated from each other by the uh, septum pellucidum, as we mentioned. And if you take those out like this, you will see that this interventricular uh, foramen or canal here connected the lateral ventricle to this 
midline ventricle that we call the uh, third ventricle. Through the third ventricle, you have the um, interthalamic attachment. This is a bridge between the two thalami because you have the lateral, the, the, the uh, third ventricle in between the two thalami. So if I take that thalamus out, I have this attachment um, tracked between the two uh, thalami going um, almost dividing the um, or going through the lateral ventricle or the lateral ventricle is actually surrounding it. Okay. Um, okay. So then the third ventricle is connected to this other chamber, the remaining chamber that we call the fourth ventricle through the aqueduct of Sylvius or the cerebral aqueduct. That aqueduct goes through the midbrain. Okay, so the cerebral cerebral aqueduct is going through the midbrain and it's connecting the third ventricle with the fourth ventricle. Okay, the fourth ventricle then has two lateral recesses and one median recess. Those recesses will lead to um, an aperture on each side, an opening or a foramen. Uh, we call them the um, foramen of Lushka. And they will lead to the ponto uh, cerebellar recess and um, then to the subarachnoid space and it will drain the CSF there. And then you have the median uh, recess uh, would have another foramen, the um, uh, foramen of Magendi, which leads to the uh, cisterna magna, also to the uh, subarachnoid space. So the CSF, which is made in the ventricles, all ventricles will have um, a structure called the choroid plexus um, that forms the uh, CSF by filtering the plasma. The CSF will then flow from the uh, third ventricle to the fourth ventricle to the uh, cerebral aqueduct to the um, uh, fourth ventricle to the foramen of Lushka and Magendi to the subarachnoid space, space where it will be absorbed uh, by the arachnoid villi into uh, the um, uh, sagittal sinuses and then uh, to the venous uh, system. Uh, what remains of, you know, after filtering out through the foramen of Lushka and Magendi, some CSF, very, very little CSF will also so go down through the central canal of the spinal cord. Um, and this basically shows you the, the relationships on this side. Let me just, one more thing on this side. If we go through the same layers, uh, uh, this model was cut differently on this side uh, just to show you those connections between uh, the, the putamen and uh, the caudate nucleus. So let's go from the lateral to medial again. You have the insula. And this on this side, they continue to um, uh, to connect the uh, internal capsule to the uh, part that carries the insula. So if I take this apart like this, you will see uh, the uh, lentiform nucleus that used to be this on this side. Okay, but it shows you the connections that go through the um, uh, internal capsule. There used to be the internal capsule like this on this side. They imagine that I remove this upper part and it shows you the connections that go through it between the, uh, uh, the putamen and the uh, caudate nucleus. So you have the, ca the, the putamen is here, the caudate nucleus is here. If I remove this, I will get to uh, the uh, corpus, uh, the, the, um, uh, the globus pallidus down here. So this is here, this here is the globus pallidus, and this here is the putamen, this is the caudate nucleus, and these are the bridges between them. Remember, Putamen plus globus pallidus is called lentiform nucleus. That's what you see here. Where is it? Probably lost it. Okay. All right. So uh, if you combine those two, okay, uh, the putamen and the globus pallidus together, that lens-shaped structure that I showed you uh, is called the lentiform nucleus. But functionally, the putamen is one unit with the caudate nucleus, okay? Those two are called the dorsal um, uh, striatum. And they're supposed to come together right here in this area, uh, anterior 
uh, anterior to the um, uh, to the putem in this area, they almost confluent together, and uh, it's called the uh, with the an the area anterior to it. Also, this area would be called the nucleus accumbens. And uh, it is an important component of the uh, basal ganglia. It is not shown uh, on this one. Um, okay, so I hope this makes it a little bit clearer. And um, uh, uh, that concludes uh, this video. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.